Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Take two, guys. <laughs> Take two. Welcome back. Yeah, more interference, but we're used to it. And you know what else we're used to? We're used to seeing the Great Divide get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's getting obnoxiously huge. It's incredible. And do you know that the world's richest men added <laughs> untold billions to their fortunes last year? As obviously, most people did not have a banner 2020 when you get down to it. Yeah, it's been a pretty rough year. It's, yeah, and, and I think there might be even the majority of people would say 2020 was the most difficult year for them, personally. Yeah. Well, one of our family members said we should do t-shirts that say, I survived 2020. There was lots of talk to that, and, and I know there were people on the New Year's shows toasting and saying, good riddance. Yep, it's been tough. It has been. Well, it hasn't been tough for Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk. In fact, do you know Elon Musk, in one year's time, quintupled his net worth five times? 2020 was the best year imaginable for Elon Musk. And we wonder what this agenda is about. And, you know, the same thing with Jeff Bezos. You know, he added a huge amount. He added more money in, into his uh, account than many countries have in their entire budgets. I know, it, it just really makes me sad. And meanwhile, a study was done in 2018 that showed that the richest people in the world, the billionaires, donate less than 1% of their net worth to charitable causes. Less than 1%. You know, why doesn't that surprise me though? It just doesn't, it's sad, but it's true. The system's broke. Mm -hmm. This system is broke and yet they want us to cheer it on. Yeah. You know, they want us to be proud of, of you know, the system. And, and they use all sorts of ways to get us tricked into thinking that this is a benevolent system where you can achieve the American dream or whatever, you know, country you're in. You could, you could achieve it. It's possible. Yet there are so many people suffering in this world. And when you, when you look at it, it is just a horrible situation that needs to change. Five times he quintupled his net worth since January. This is Elon Musk. And this is hard to even cover for me. Yeah. You know, and then, of course, who's doing great with the lockdown? Well, it's, it's, it's not people that own small businesses, that's for sure. Yet Amazon, the stock's gone 70% higher you know and it was a banner year it was a banner year i mean these like your amazon your walmart you know you have all these big big corporate entities that you know this has been great for them yeah for them you know while we are sitting here struggling all of us get trying just trying to get past the year so when you put Bezos and Musk together, the two men increased their net worth by a staggering $200 billion last year, a sum greater than the gross domestic products of 139 countries. That's staggering. You know, so, yeah, they have more. That's, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. that's, that's like more than half the world has, you know, GDPs less than these two guys, mm -hmm. two individuals. How is this a just system? Uh, well, it's even hard to fathom, really. See, th this is a system that is set up all about the solar plexus chakra. It's about me, 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 ego, greed. And, you know, that is not where we're going. We're going up to the heart chakra, which is going to be about compassion. Do you, do you, do you realize, like, what you could do with, with the type of money, like, if they even gave 10% of that 200 billion to say Yemen, a country that has been suffering tremendously through war and famine, you know, five to 10 million people are in danger of dying of starvation there. Well, you know, just the interest alone could feed that country. I know it's really repulsive actually. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking about some of the um, teachings of, Yeshua, you know, who it, more, most people know him by the name Jesus, which is the Latinized version of Yeshua. And his teachings and some of the hidden ones, which we're going to cover later on in the video um, that people aren't well acquainted with. But, you know, this system 
is you know you could view it as the system of satan yeah. it's 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 the system of pure evil mm-hmm. well it's all about the money changers you know exactly which you know if you want to get biblical you know overthrowing the tables and kicking them out of the temple right. you know showed a little anger there but you know it's it's okay to feel a little bit angry at a system that is like this it, it just boggles the mind that this is what we have. And by the way, you know, in quote-unquote communist China, you know, there's more billionaires every day. That's, one, that's where there's more billionaires being created um, in proportion to other countries is over in quote-unquote communist China. Well, com- communist, the root word's communal. That's, you know, the, the theology that's in effect is not communal. Is everybody sharing equally? No, it's a capitalistic society with some people doing well and other people not. And that's what that's the model that they want us to take on. But then again, we've talked about the Vatican's wealth. And if you're looking for examples, that wouldn't be one. I mean, I don't think I think if, you know, Christ was to ask the Pope, hey, do you really want to go all the way? You know, get rid of all the riches of the Vatican, give it all to the poor and then follow me because you're not following me. Right. No, that's not their agenda. (laughs) Not at all. And it's, as we've seen, it's been all about control and handouts. And that's how they get us to go along with things. And so, you know, is universal basic income inevitable as we move to a cashless society? And, you know, again, it's going to make it so that it's going to be tougher you know, if uh, if you got a guy down the street that you know is a handyman and you need something done in the house, well, everything's going to have to go through the powers that be. You're not going to be able to say, hey, you know, how about sixty dollars, you know, under the table if you fix this electrical outlet? Yeah, it's not going to work like that anymore. So they're making sure now that not one penny is going to slip from from their banks. Absolute total control. So this is curious. Uh, because of the tension over there in the Mideast and with Iran that's going on between Iran, Israel, and the U.S., they're moving uh, their aircraft carrier, the Nimitz, over to the U.S. West Coast. They're, they're going to bring it into port. Um, almost everything's in port right now. That's kind of creepy. It's It feels weird. I mean, we know there's a lot of things going on. Uh, we know the geopolitical situation is pretty hot mm-hmm. and contested. Um, there's a lot of people with a lot of thoughts on this. Yeah, there sure is. I mean, times are changing. Yep, and it's been said that you know aircraft carriers, you know, can be a sitting duck. They're so huge out there, and so I can understand that. But bringing it all the way back into port, mm-hmm. you know, very very interesting because the amount of force forces that are like say in the Middle East and even over, you know, um, in the South China Sea and over in the Pacific, very, very small right now. This this is super unusual. I've been following this for almost four years, watching every week, never seen uh, this situation before. No, a lot of unanswered questions. And so our, our brother Larry over in Texas said, did you see about the evacuations in St. Vincent and the Grenadines because of uh, volcanic activity at La Soufriere? And, you know, I knew it was active. I didn't see that they had evacuated, though. Thank you, Larry, for letting me know. And, of course, the question is, will we see something happen with Pele? Because Pele, you know, again, they, ro- they raised the warning to a yellow level. Um, so it's curious just because really, you know, Casey's prophecies of Pele and, and Vesuvius and, and this whole thing going on because the volcanic activity is definitely increasing. Well, we have plenty of reasons to keep an eye on stuff right now. And <laughs> this is interesting because the, the USGS is, they don't really have an answer for how an island is growing in a lava lake on top of Kilauea. So that's curious. Scientists have ideas, but, uh. They really don't know. And this thing's 820 feet long and 440 feet wide, 26 feet above the lava lake's surface. Because, you know, the thought is lava is at such a high temperature that how could anything solidify and harden in it? Well, they haven't given us an answer yet. (laughs) I'm surprised. Usually they come up with something, anything. Well, we know how it is with the USBS and never a straight answer. (laughs) Yeah, they don't. They just do what they want. 
And by the way, there's 24 quakes over there in Hawaii as well. Um, one of the things that hit me too is, you know, Texas, just like Oklahoma, before fracking days, they didn't get a lot of quakes, you know. And even if they stop fracking right now, there is damage that has has been done. And it is setting us up for not only, you know, toxic water, <laughs> you know, higher incidences of certain diseases, um, but for the possibility of bigger quakes. And so here to the northeast of Midland, I was looking as like, wow, I, I really don't remember seeing many times when we get like a swarm of five quakes over in Texas. And you can see 4.0, 2.5, 3.1, 2.6, 3.4. They're not tiny, you know, they're not one point something. So, you know, it's, again, it's, you can look at it as penny wise, pound foolish, uh, borrowing from the future, or just setting ourselves up for a lot of trouble. Well, I'm going to keep an eye on it. Yeah, it's curious, you know, and again, uh, having gone through there recently several times, there's just there's there's so many it's all you see out there is just the wells and it's the same thing and when you go uh from new mexico into colorado it's just all fracking up through here it's horrible and we got a curious little one over here by the st lawrence a 1.7 um but i do think too like casey was showing this whole thing enlarged uh as well as far as his prophecies and we talked about that. And by the way, we have 100 mile an hour winds, or 110 actually, and 45 foot waves from Bombo Genesis again. This is up in Alaska. And by the way, we have record low millibar pressure. And we have a lot of snow too. Uh, a lot of the country is seeing snow and ice conditions right now. And we also got record high pressure over in Mongolia. Wow. So we got records going both ways. It makes me wonder how much more can that poor pendulum swing without falling off? Temperatures 45 below Celsius. Yeah, it's it's wild. So, yeah, that pendulum swinging and, you know, it, it reminds me of as a kid, mm -hmm. you know, you could get some momentum going yourself. But then maybe either your big brother or your dad would come and give you a little bit more of a push. So, yeah, it makes me wonder, you know, are we getting a little bit of a push from maybe a, a big brother or something? Well, I'm pretty sure we are. Very well could be. And we got a 9.6 inch of snow record blanketing downtown Des Moines, Iowa, setting a record. Yeah, records are falling everywhere, everywhere. And that's not the only thing falling either, unfortunately. We have another case of hundreds of dead birds falling from the sky in Rome, Italy. And some of the local authorities were kind of saying, well, maybe it's because of all the fireworks they let off last night with this New Year celebration. But I don't remember seeing that. And I, I've been in Times Square for the fireworks, and I didn't see any birds falling. I know. I didn't know that that was a common thing, that birds can't handle fireworks. No, and we've seen so many. I, I kind of wonder if there's any technology involved in this, or is this the birds' GPSs, as we've seen, you know, that flying into windows, flying even into high-voltage electricity cables. Um, we've had so many, you know, this this is a, a good thought there, I think. Yeah, I think that might be pretty accurate. Hundreds of drunk birds killing themselves, flying into an apartment block in Inner Mongolia, and then we see... So many birds falling out of the sky in Philadelphia. They didn't know what was going on. Raining birds. Mm -hmm. Unprecedented numbers falling in New Mexico as well. And we, we've noticed some strange behavior the last several days with birds. Have you guys noticed any strange behavior with birds? We've seen them like chasing each other and fighting. And it's not just one species. It's several different species that seem to be kind of cranky. Yeah, it, it just feels like there's something weird in the air. Mm -hmm. It really does, yeah. As I look at all these strange clouds out there, hmm, mm -hmm. those don't look too natural. But anyway, so guys, thank you so much for being part of the family. Make sure you're subscribed and have the bell clicked for notifications. Thank you for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. Anybody needs to reach us, it's E-E-A-R-T-S at ProtonMail or EvolutionaryEnergyArts at gmail.com. 
And thank you for your patience with that as well. God bless, guys. Stay safe. Namaste. Namaste.